with profound humble gratitude and love to all venerated enlightened masters. We bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by their divine grace. Part 4 of 4 Etc. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, heaven Godspeed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. When the food is in the brightness, the, the antioxidant level is highest. You find it's also most tasty in the is when the foods become accessible to humans. And that is nature's design, that is the language of the language of harmony. Please stay with us to enjoy this illuminating Congress. If we continue like this, to exist in this way as humanity, we will destroy ourselves. Simply because these livestock farms pollute the environment, pollute nature. If we don't take action now, it will be too late in the future. Nicola Donovy, Vegan Today's program will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Aulas is also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Korean, Mongolian, Persian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Thai and Ukrainian or Uranian. Welcome, energetic viewers, at Joseph. Welcome in Belizean Creole. Hope you are having a wonderful day filled with good cheer. I am Barbara, the considerate Belizeans wish you peace and contentment in heaven's love. Belize is a warm and welcoming country located on the northeastern coast of Central America, bordering Mexico to the north and Guatemala to the south and west. With English as the official language, Belizean society is highly multicultural with many languages spoken, including Belizean Creole, Spanish and Mayan languages. In ancient times, Belize was the heartland of the Maya Empire. To this day, a significantly large number of Maya ruins have been found here, with some dating back as far as 2600 BC. Belize is renowned for its unique ecosystems, with pristine jungle covering 50% of the land, most of which is under government protection. This dense forest region is home to a diverse range of wild animal people, including jaguars, armadillos, tapirs, as well as hundreds of species of bird people. In addition, the Belize Barrier Reef is the second largest coral reef in the world. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was described by Charles Darwin as the most remarkable reef in the West Indies. Nowadays, it is considered an important habitat for the survival of threatened animal people species, including sea turtles and manatees. In 2010, Belize was one of the first countries in the world to institute a complete and permanent ban on all forms of trawling in the country's waters. Thanks to the ban, our marine animal friends are enjoying more peace which they so rightfully deserve.
in December 2010, the first ever Middle East Vegetarian Congress was held at the Dubai International Exhibition Center, with the public invited to engage in an interactive exploration of the plant-based lifestyle. Organized by the Middle East Veg Group or MeVeg, supported by the Middle East Natural and Organic Product Expo 2010 and endorsed by the Dubai Health Authority of the United Arab Emirates, the event provided two days of seminars, workshops and video telecasts with experts from around the world, along with rejuvenating veg cuisine. In addition, Supreme Master Xinhai Vegan was especially invited to speak via live video link on being a vegan, an environmentally sustainable food choice, followed by a question and answer session with attendees, and the launch of the Arabic edition of the international best-selling book The Birds in My Life, which was already sold out pre-launch. The Birds in My Life was printed by United Printing and Publishing, a subsidiary of Abu Dhabi Media Company, or ADMC, owned by the government of Abu Dhabi. We now invite you to join us for part 6 of the conference titled The First Middle East Vegetarian or Mi Beach Congress, held in the city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates on December 6, 2010, where Lo Yuan Frutarian, Senior Executive of Education and Outreach of Vegetarian Society Singapore, goes into detail on how to eat a healthy fruitarian diet and its benefits. The uh, destruction is something that we really need to uh, look, look closely at because um, we are destroying ourselves. I'm not sure you've seen this documentary before. Life of the people, anybody seen this? Life of the people. For those of you who haven't, this documentary explains what happens to the planet Earth when humans perish. They had a view of experts how the planet actually restores itself when humans leave the planet. And we are moving fast towards this. I think what the, one of the ideas of the producer of this documentary is to awaken people, is to let us know that uh, we are moving towards this. If we don't do anything about it, we'll be there soon. Because according to calculations, we need one and a half planets to sustain the current rate of uh, resources we're consuming based on the US standards. So um, it's not only possible, it's the most natural and it's the best way to celebrate life. I'm just going to briefly mention the third part of, the, of my workshop. After this, at 4.30, uh, we are having a workshop. If you'd like to join, we will strongly encourage you. This is to exemplify what I've been saying earlier, for how the plant-based diet is truly beneficial. So in that workshop, I'm going to explain the, the, the goodness, nature, intended, talk about the ingredients I use, and do a hands-on. Okay, this workshop is a hands-on. We're going to have many stations, hopefully 10 stations and uh, 10 different sets of ingredients, 10 different kinds of smoothies. And you do it hands-on. I'm going to demonstrate one smoothie and you can sample it. And then you do the, uh, the, the 10. And you can sample the other 10 uh, smoothies if you like. Okay, to, to show you the versatility of the, of the smoothie making. I'm just sharing with you some of the points that I explained during that workshop. The more processed the foods you consume, the more resources it consumes. Okay, so to us, maybe a very innocent plate of noodles, but actually a lot of energy is gone into it. So it's best that we consume food that is, that is as unprocessed as possible. Because um, the more processed the food is, the less the nutrients, and the body will be craving for nutrients. So you, you find that many of us eat because of the craving to eat, because the body is starving for nutrients. So as a result, we we eat even more, we gosh even more. And what do we eat? We eat even more empty calories. So it's very common that, that this happens and we set up a cycle of overeating. Okay, so um, the point is that the diet we choose drains the planet's resources. 
this uh, stuff is good, all the good stuff is here, no bad stuff. You, you trend dance. And the, the point I'm making here about being easily absorbed, many bodybuilders also like this kind of diet because, uh, because the, the particles are finely ground, it's easy for the body to absorb. I'll be explaining some of the, new, the ingredients we use, why we soak them in a certain way, what the, 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 the benefits are. This is, uh, flaxseeds flex are good for anti-aging, good health. And I'll be explaining why the fruits that we use seem to look a bit overripe. I think by most fruit standards, they, they, they think it's overripe. Actually, that is where the nutrient level is highest. Okay, so this is about a bit about the art of eating fruits. Uh, this is an example, is when you see the black spots here. Okay, that's the best time to eat the fruit because according to that study, according to this, this Belgium study, um, it is when the fruit is in its peak brightness that the antioxidant level is highest. You find it's also most tasty, it's the sweetest, it's when the fruit drops from the tree. It is when the fruit is meant to be eaten, it's when the fruits become accessible to humans. Okay, that is nature's design, that is the language of love, the language of harmony. That's the way it's supposed to be. I think most people would start throwing the bananas away at this stage. Right? Actually, it's the best time to eat it. This is a, just a sample of the smoothies that we've been doing. This is a passion fruit smoothie. You can see the, the different kinds of uh, fruits we use. There'll be 10 altogether, depending on the crowd I get, maybe we do less. Anyway, I'm just showing you six of the samples. This is a, it's a plum, plum smoothie. I'm using all local fruits here, okay, because we are trying to encourage people to use what is available near you to make it to something that is very healthy and very tasty. I think we all know what healthy food is. It's a, it's a question of making it taste good. And uh, that's, that's the whole idea behind this uh, smoothie making workshop. To encourage people to show people how it can be done. Very simple, nutrient dense, it can be done by anyone, even a child can do it. This is the green one, it's a green smooth. I, I have 10 recipes. The first four are fruity smoothies, the second group are uh, green smoothies, and the third group is uh, uh, nut milks. Okay, so it caters to different kinds. People who want high protein, for example, should go for the nut milk. We introduced this to, to some schools in Singapore, and uh, well, it was only partially successful. This was the most successful one, you know, all the kids went for the chocolate smoothie. This is using figs. The figs I'm using here, this is the dried one, but I think over here you can get the fresh ones. So I'll be ending here, I just want to, just to remind you that it's, I think it's important that we think that diet is not just about our stomach, it's also about the planet. We all connected, and it's good to return the kindness of the earth. Are there uh, questions you'd like to ask? Thank you very much. Uh, my question was, Having just fruits, um, how does that affect our sugar level and is it enough in terms of carbohydrates and how do you balance between those that give sugar very quickly and have a lot of sugar and those that don't? Yeah, I've been asked that question many times um, about sugar levels. What I do is I combine, because it's just sweet fruits, the sugar level will take a jump. And so you find that I use fruits that are not always sweet. It also depends from body to body. Uh, I use nuts and seeds too. In many of the, the recipes, I use nuts and seeds to balance on this. And, and by the way, this, this, uh, these smoothies I'm making are not drinks, no? they are meals. Because I survive on them. I live on these things, I don't eat rice. Maybe in my normal meals, I don't eat rice. When I'm outside, maybe I do. Um, so I use nuts and seeds to balance. And sometimes I use like, things like, like papaya. Papaya may not always be sweet. And I think also my body has been adapted to it. So I don't, my, my body doesn't react to it. I do long distance runs sometimes. And, um, there was one time I, I, I ate only papaya, you know, papaya for, for 10 p.m. And I was expecting my energy level to drop, but it never came. So I think also the, the body's uh, condition needs to be adapted. Any other questions? Yeah. So you classify yourself as raw or fruitarian? Raw fruitarian? No, a raw fruitarian. Right, right. Um, once you transition into being raw, how do you deal with the detox effects? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's a good question. Um, because when some people jump into this vegetarian diet, the body reacts because it's a highly detoxifying diet. Some people even experience um, fever or, or runny nose. Because the body starts, it, it jumps into a, 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 a detox mode. So in my case, I went from, I, I've gone through many kinds of vegetarian diets. I started eating brown rice and all the cool stuff. One time I was eating a lot of pancakes. 
and then I was sitting silent to know him. Um, but I, I came into this gradually. So it's, it's a matter of, of proportion. I was eating the normal cooked foods, uh, like, like most people, and then I started to increase, increase my raw vegetarian diet. How many percent are you today? Now, now I'm about 80%, 80 zeros. 38 to 20. Yeah. But uh, I think if I want to, I can, I can switch to 100%. It's not, not a big deal. It's just out of convenience, like when I'm here, I do eat cooked foods to stay alive. Any other questions? How sustainable is a fruitarian or a raw food uh, diet in a region like this? It's, it's very sustainable. I, my, my meal times are, are like everybody else. And as, as I was saying earlier, if you eat a lot of uh, sweet, juicy fruits, yeah, you can't sustain. I get weak. You know, I get the hypoglycemic uh, effect very soon. Uh, but when I eat some nuts and seeds, it, it, it sustains. So uh, balancing it with the nuts and seeds is important. All right. There was a question here. You have a microphone. Is coming here. I live here, here in, in the Emirates. There's a little, little sort of scarcity of fruits and vegetables, so everything is imported, right? So when uh, when the, when things are imported, it's, it's imported very raw, and it drives here in the shop or in the supermarkets. So how do you feel uh, people living in this part of the world? How would they adjust to be a fruitarian, or how? Would would the nutrients in the fruits would be enough for us? Right. My question is that we are buying them undried, or we, you, it is it's coming from its country, right? Not dried, like a green, and it comes yellow here, yeah. it takes its color, color here, and it drives here. So how healthy is that? This is my question. Right. I mean, yeah. would it keep its nutrients all this all this time? Yeah. You know, yeah. if I'm in my country, for example, I just get a thing from the tree and eat it. I can get something from the land and eat it. That's hundred percent. Nutrient, have, have yes, a yes. first. But what about here? This is my right. question. Right. How full? How full it is? How much nutrients are still in there? Yeah. With with all this trip and all the pesticides and all this. Uh, right. You, you know, there's there's a test by uh, New Skin. New Skin. They test the antioxidant levels. Have you seen this? They, they shoot a laser beam into your skin, and then they test the, the, the antioxidant levels. Yeah, and anyway, I, I have mine tested and mine is right at, at the top of the range. So although in Singapore, we don't get, we don't get fresh fruits, you know, we don't get we don't have trees to pluck the fruits from. All our fruits and uh, vegetables are important. And I, I've, been, I've been surviving on that, you know. Uh, so far, it's, it's, been, it's been good. Of course, having the real natural, naturally ripe, ripe fruits is best, no doubt about that. But um, speaking from my experience, it's not been a problem. So what I do is I buy the fruits unripe and I let it sit in my kitchen until it is ripe. I, I do that. And I try to buy fruits, like bananas for example, I try to buy the local ones, not the imported ones, because I'm told that um, there's a lot of pesticide spray for, for the exported ones. So try to buy local, go local. Yes, Papa has a question. I'm having a comment actually. Yes. <laughs> we will fight here. <laughs> As an expert in nutrition, right. with all the studies in the world, right. you cannot live on your own foods. Yeah. You can't. Impossible. Vitamin B12, right. unless you take it as a supplement. Right. Iron deficiency, anemia, lactating, pregnancy, type 2 diabetes. But you have, it's good to have it for one day and a week, right. weekly basis. Right. I, don't, I, de I agree on that. But to have it as a pattern, I stopped myself not to comment, but I couldn't. It's, yeah. You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. You will have deficiencies. I, right. And you have to compensate these deficiencies by taking them as supplements, tablets. Because never ever you will get from nuts, smoothies, B12. Never ever you will have iron, which comes from heme. Heme means hemoglobin to be produced as an, as an expert in nutrition, certified clinical dietitian, I cannot tell you you can you have to be a Fruitanian all your life. Right. You have from my point of view to have it for detoxifying, it's an excellent, excellent diet for detoxification. I do agree on that, but once in a week or twice or twice in a month. I'm, I'm sorry, I, but I have I, to say that. No no it is it's, it's it's, it's a good point because this is not the first time I'm, I'm hearing this. I've been told many times that this is impossible. This, I think that's why the, the question was raised. Uh, to, to be honest with you, I do take vitamin B12 supplements. 
okay? Because uh, D12, the original source of D12 is soy bacteria. Okay, we all think that it must be from meat, from animal products. Um, but the original source of D12 is from soil bacteria. It is synthesized by soil bacteria. Animal products have it because animal graze from the ground. They, they, they eat the contamination of D12 and they, they put it to the eggs, put it to the milk, put it to the meat. But because the ground is so contaminated now, we don't take groundwater. If you drink well water, spring water, it would have been there. But we, we can't do that these days because it is too polluted, too dangerous to do that. So, Yes, I do take uh, vitamin B12 supplements. That's the only supplement I take. Okay. And all the, all the others, uh, I don't have a problem. I've been doing this for nine years. Nine years. I'm still here. I'm still alive. So I, I know there's a lot of scientific studies saying that, you know, is this really possible? Now, can you really live on just fruits? But uh, like, like I say, my fruits, is, my fruits includes nuts and seeds. Yeah, yeah. I think if it's just juicy fruits, no, no. I tried, it, it, it didn't work. Yeah, but when, uh, I'd like to share that when I was uh, a vegan for two and a half years, I used to get my hemoglobin levels checked. And surprisingly, because it wasn't just fruits, but I would make sure that I would have the vegetables which have just maybe traces of iron in there. And I never had a problem. I could donate blood even during the time. I mean, you know, so it's... My iron level is very high. My iron level is on the upper limit. Wow. Because, yeah, yeah. No, because uh, lots of fruits have iron. The, you know, when, when you cut the fruits, the fruits are turned brown. That's the iron oxidizing. Yeah, uh, nuts, uh, fruits, dates. Lots of them have iron. So iron is never going to fall. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay, quickly, because we have to go for a break. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kuchi, you please tell us uh, what is. Uh, a day's meal in terms of like what do you have for breakfast and lunch? Okay, sure. Um, it varies, okay? I don't have rules. I follow what my body tells me. But morning is always something fruity, something bright. So it's always more citrus. And actually, if you're eating a, a fruity smoothie, it's best not to add nuts and seeds. So, sorry, could you just, when you say citrus smoothie, you'd have one orange? Oh, I see. Um, or lime, lemon. Banana, kiwi, yeah, um, whatever is in my fridge actually. Uh, mangoes. Mangoes is a very good uh, 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 energy supplier. Uh, flax seeds, goji berries. I think flax and goji berries, I have it almost every meal, or one teaspoon or so, every meal, a little bit each time. And whatever, whatever else is in my fridge. Uh, <laughs> but for energy, energy is, is uh, largely bananas and mangoes. A big hand for you. Thank you. Before we go for a break, you have I I would like to request you to please introduce yourself to the person sitting behind you. I'm sure you know the person sitting on your left side or the right side. Just just your name and so that when you see each other at the break, then uh, you would at least know a, a few more people. And Done? Come on guys, everybody. We are not strangers here, we are all here to participate in a wonderful life changing program. Okay, excellent. Guys, the break that we are going to have is going to be for 15 minutes. So kindly, uh, if you could be back there by 12.30. And the break is called Food for the Soul. This meal will be brought to this Congress by Radhe Radhe, the purely vegetarian restaurant located in Dubai, started over a year ago. Radhe Radhe believes in the simple philosophy that energy from food strongly influences the thought, which in turn creates the person that you are. So these are the foundations of the food at Radhe Radhe. Guys, see you back in 15 minutes. Thank you for being such a nice, patient audience. It's okay to make war. Only others will die or suffer. The people in your war-ravaged country will have to continue paying tax to lavish all means to keep you well-fed and safe anyway. Enchanting viewers, thank you for your presence today for the first Middle East Vegetarian or Meat Veg Congress on Words of Wisdom. Please, 
Join us next Monday, January 2nd, for part 7 of this illuminating conference. Coming up next is A Dog's Journey, a story of selfless loyalty. May the celestial light and music soothe and inspire you always. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Unsere Sendungen bieten viele Sprachen. Gehen Sie auf suprememastertv.com schrägstrich schedule und suprememastertv.com schrägstrich WOW.